Hi, uh, my name is Jim Hallenbeck. I'm going to show you how I make rosaries today. There's an example of one right here uh, that I've made. Um, it's a pretty standard rosary with pins and, and chain between them. There's a lot of different ways to make them. This is one way I choose to make them. Uh, I've made probably it's getting close to 9,000 of them now and we've given them all away. We've never sold a single rosary. So, uh, so I'll show you how, how we do it. And, the first way to do it is, uh, or the first thing that we want to talk about is the tools. The tools over there, you only need two tools. Um, there's a plier, a needle nose plier, and a looper tool. I have one here as well, the looper tool. It clips and uh, uh, bends an eye clip or an eye pin, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And then a needle nose pliers. I tend to like the the Van plier needle nose pliers. It's a forged uh, uh, needle nose plier, so it's extra strong. Um, uh, you're doing twisting motions with them and they seem to have a pretty good life. Um, if you're buying tools, I like to have at least two of these one and a half millimeter looper tools on hand at a time because sometimes these springs here break. And so if you're gonna be making a lot of rosaries, I would recommend having two of these. Um, so yeah, over time they can get magnetized too, and that can get annoying because the pin clip won't fall off, but anyway. Um, okay, so you have your two tools. I also recommend having three lids from different things. These are, these red ones are from Jiffy uh, <laughs> peanut butter, and I use them to put pins in, both before there's, they've been pinned, and then after. And then another uh, container uh, to catch your uh, clips from your pins. Um, that could be anything. This happens to be the lid from a jar of uh, planter's peanuts. Um, then you need your eye pins. You'll see some of them over there. Uh, these are like one and a half or two millimeter uh, eye pins. These are, I believe, 50 millimeters long. I Typically, I think a better length for them is 40 millimeters because of, there's less waste then. And then um, if you buy them by weight, you get more pins. And then if you have to pay for the shipping, you're paying for uh, less waste to be shipped to you. Um, then you need, you need beads. These are just one kind of bead. If you're using round beads, a pretty standard size bead is six millimeter. If you want them a little bit smaller, maybe four. Smaller than that, it gets a little harder to make. Um, you can tend to crush the beads when you bend the pins. Um, but they can work at a size of two millimeters. They just get pretty small. These are rice beads, or the, the rice shape, oval rice. Um, that's kind of the name of the shape. Um, I like those, they feel nice in your hand, but round ones are nice too. Uh, you can go to 10 millimeter. Um, bigger than that, they start really getting really large and then your rosary gets really long. Um, then you also need uh, jump rings. These are pre, uh, they have a little cut in them. You can bend them to open them, to clip them onto things, the eye pins, and then also the chain, and then your center metals and your crucifix. But some crucifixes come with a um, jump ring on them, so you either need three or four um, uh, of the jump rings per rosary. Then you need your center metals. Here's two different sizes. Those are both custom made. We had those custom made. They have uh, Father Samuel Mazzucchelli, the uh, venerable Father Samuel Mazzucchelli on them. He was a Dominican friar from Milan, Italy, who moved to the United States. And he built churches from Mackinac all the way through Wisconsin into Iowa. Uh, he's a uh, pretty interesting and pretty, pretty neat guy. He built uh, a lot of churches, in fact, in the area that we live in. Then you also need uh, some chain links. Um, you can buy them pre-cut. Uh, I have some links that you can use to um, order these. Uh, you can also buy bulk chain and just cut them yourself. That takes a while to do. It's just a matter, it's just a matter of where you want to spend your time. It doesn't cost too much more to have it cut for you. And usually if the links are cut for rosary making, it's a perfect chain for making rosaries. And if you're buying bulk chain and you're buying it online and you haven't seen the chain before, you can end up buying chain that you don't really like, and then you have to decide if you send it back or not. Then you also have to buy a tool to cut the chain, 
or have a tool to cut the chain and that can be kind of hard depending on the hardness of the metal and it's also can be really small links so it can be kind of a tedious task uh, and then I have some some things put together in various stages um, these are five decades put already assembled so that's 50 beads plus three beads for the uh, uh, Faith, Hope, and Charity beads. And then the Potter beads or the Our Father beads. Um, I already have chains on them and they're pinned and everything. They're ready to assemble. Um, we'll get there. Um, and then, so you need 59 beads total to make a rosary. You need 14 cut chain links. Um, you need three or four jump rings. You need four jump rings, but your crucifix may have one on there, so you may only need three. Then you need a center metal and a crucifix. Once it's assembled, it looks kind of like this. Then you need to decide how you're going to store them or keep them until you give them away or whatnot. I tend to use these plastic bags. These are, I just buy these on Amazon. Um, these are two, uh, two inch by three inch. Um, they come in, this is a bag of a hundred, but I bought a big box of them, um, probably a thousand of them, and it was maybe 10 bucks. Um, and then they're like this, and then when you, you can, these rosaries fit in there just fine. Um, even with this large metal. So uh, what I'll do is I'll show you what I, the process I go through to, to make a rosary now. So you'll note, this is just the way I do it for purposes of being semi-efficient. I set up my pins with the beads in the middle, and then I set my complete, my pinned beads right here. So I go and I just take a pin, I put it in the bead, you'll note it for efficient, then I set it here just for very efficient. You can do it any way you like, but I find this efficient. If you're left-handed, you may want to reverse it. It just goes real fast, just like this. So then, that's with the beads in the middle, pins on the right, your pinned beads on the left, and then you kind of go in reverse to put them back together. You pick up your bead, you have your looper tool here, one and a half uh, millimeter looper. You put it through, clip it, and you put it here. See how efficient that is? The way that I have them set up in kind of a triangle there. So, okay, why don't you come in a little closer so you can see how this beat, this uh, looping tool uh, works. It's like this. When you stick it through, there's a hole right there. Your pin will go through there if your pin is long enough. And then if you watch, as I squeeze it, you'll see it clips the pin and bends it. Okay, and there you go, and then it's done. Then you just lift it off. I'll show that to you again. Talk you through it just a little bit. The pins don't have to be perfectly straight. You can put them in there just fine like this. Okay, so you, what you wanna do, see I put it at, so it's kind of like a parallel with the floor. And then when I, I'm pushing it in as far as I can with the bead, pressing the bead up in, in there as far as it can go pretty much down on the lower part here. And then when I squeeze it, it gets it nice and tight, but yet there's enough room for it to kind of move around and rotate freely. The other piece to notice here is that this pin may not be perfectly aligned in line with the, and perfectly closed. And that's okay at this point. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. Okay. So you get your, your, uh, your beads with pins in them and then you clip the pins to shorten them up, and then you start assembling them. And so you need to make five decades of 10, then you need uh, one length of three for the uh, Faith, Hope, and Charity beads, and then you need six potter beads. So we'll start putting together the decades first. And you just take a bead, if you move in close, you open it up, pick your next bead, Take your next bead. Now what you'll notice, I was talking before about how there might be one that's not, here I'll just show you, it might, it might look like this. Um, it might look like this, where it's not perfectly closed up. So what you do is the side that is perfectly closed or is closed as best as you can, then you put that on the open side of your other, of your other bead. Then you bend it down so it's nice and, nice and closed up, real tight. And then you open this side, grab your next bead, Put the more closed side on here, put it on there, 
close it up. And then you might touch up this other one that's there so that it's nice and closed. And then you open up the other side and you just keep going. Right like that. Kind of just making a chain of these beaded pins. So I'm dropping stuff around here. Okay. So that's good. Hey, let's make a full one. Let's go five more. It goes real fast. So when you're doing this, you might move this a little bit closer to you to keep it nice and nice and close. Because close is faster if that's what you're going for. Um, now over time with these pliers, these van pliers, sometimes the handle will get loose and slide off. The, the rubber piece will slide off. And what I do then when that starts happening, because it gets kind of annoying when you're using it, what I do is I just take the handle all the way off. I put some super glue in there. Now be careful because the super glue will stick to your hands like instantly. So do your best not to put in overly too much super glue. Um, it'll probably ooze out on you regardless. But, uh, um, but anyway, you put a little bit of super glue in there, you slide the handle back on and then it'll stay. I've never had one come off after I did that. Okay. So, and you'll see how I'm twisting these. If you use an inexpensive pliers or one that's not strong enough, uh, your plier will wear out from the twisting. And these van pliers, they seem to last a long time. They're just on Amazon. So then you have 10 beads. All in, there's a decade. So let's just make one potter bead here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up one side. We're gonna get one of these chain links on here. We're gonna put a chain link on one side. Close it up, and we're going to put it on the other. All right, there you go. Then you have a potter bead with a chain on it, All right? So you need five of these decades. You need six of these. You also need a length of three for the Faith, Hope, and Charity beads. <clears throat> so once you have all your decades, all these pieces, to you can start putting your potter beads on your decade on your decades, okay? So we'll do this right here. We'll get four of those. Four. So we'll just start using these pieces here. That's two, three, four. All right, that's four of those. And then we have a fifth decad right there. So let's put them together. When I'm done making these decades, by the way, what I do is I go ahead and open the pin on the ends so that when I come back and I'm ready to put the potter beads on there, they're already there. And when I want to assemble them, everything's already open. It saves a little bit of time. All right, so then we start putting this together. Keep track of your bead count as you're stringing the beads together. Um, you'll make a mistake sometimes. You might end up uh, one bead short sometimes, or you might end up with one bead extra, and you don't notice it until you get your rosary completed. But uh, you know you don't do that. You do you don't do that too many times before you start realizing. Oh, I gotta keep track of my bead counts a little bit better. But it still happens. Then you just fix it when it does. So, okay, so we have five decades all assembled. And then we need to put, on the ends here, we need to put two more chain links. One on each side. One. Two. There we go, that's done. Now, we're going to put the potter beads, get our father beads, onto the Faith, Hope, and Charity beads. One. See, it was, since these are already open, it goes a little faster. Not that speed is of the essence, but uh, if you're looking to make 10 of these in an afternoon or whatever, um, and you only have so much time, well, you know, a little bit of time savings helps. Okay, so we have all our beads assembled. 
So now we need, uh, we need our uh, jump rings. We need a metal. We'll go ahead and use this bigger one. This big metal is pretty good size. Normally I don't use them this big, but then we, what you do, the jump ring has a little slit in it. You just open it up. Some people use, might use two pliers for that. I'm able to get it with my fingers. So let's start with these beads. And I like to string the, uh, the chain through first. And I'm right-handed. So then I take the metal, put it on, and I use the metal itself to help bend it closed. If you zoom in on there, you can just see how I do this. And I can just bend it so it's closed. Kind of squeeze it like there to line it, make sure it's lined up, and it's good. Then we do the other side. Sometimes these jump rings are hard to pick up. Normally I would do this on a table with a placemat on there so I don't scratch the table with my implements and the, the beads and the metal pieces, but uh, to keep it looking clean today, we left them off, but I'll put those back on placemats or a towel or something so you don't scratch your nice furniture. So you put it on, you bend it closed. That's good. Then you do the same with the potter beads. You just find that uh, split in the jump ring. It can be hard to see sometimes. Um, I have bifocals on right now, progressive bifocals, so it helps me see them. But you may need reading glasses or some sort of magnification to see them if your eyes are uh, a little deficient. So then we have that. Then we need to put a cross on there. I tend to like these papal crosses. If you buy enough of them, a big enough batch of them, they're not terribly expensive. We put the crucifix on. And just like with the center metal, you can bend it closed. Give it a nice squeeze. And your rosary's done. So then you quality control it. Counts, this is what I'm talking about, the bead counts, right? So if you hold two beads together up here, then you'll see four on each side. The line up here. Chances are, if they line up perfectly, it's unlikely that you, if you got one deck it wrong, that you would line, accidentally line them up perfectly, but you can count them. Usually you can look real easily at five and see it without having to count them too quickly. So I have five, then I can see I have another five, so that's right. Then I can quickly see that's another 10. I have the right number of beads there. You might also quality control check it, just looking to make sure that you closed up your pins uh, enough. If you have smaller chain, sometimes you need to be a little bit more careful on uh, closing your pins up tight because uh, they'll, uh, and also your jump rings, um, because the smaller chain can sneak through much easier. Or if you're, if you're uh, with a wire on your pins as a smaller gauge, you need to close up the gaps a little bit more. And there's one that needs just a little attention. So, and what you'll find is if they're, if you're shipping these to anybody like friends or family or maybe women's shelter or something that you're sending them to or a hospital. Um, if there's any little gap in there that they could, that they could potentially come loose on, they'll cut it'll happen in shipping and then they'll show up and somebody will send you a note saying, Oh, they look great. This one needs a little work, but it happens. Um, so just take a peek at them before you ship them off or give them away just to make sure you don't know if the person who gets them will have a needle nose pliers. So, so that's that one. And so then you can take one of your bags or you can get, you know, fancy pouches if you want. You can even get velvet pouches for an inexpensive price. You can get those on Amazon or other places. Some of the places you can buy beads and so on. Then you just put it in the bag, drop it in, kind of push it down, put your parts in, kind of squeeze the air out and zip it closed. And you have your finished rosary. And that's how I make, uh, that's how I make these rosaries. I, you can say prayers with them or as you make them. Um, what I find, part of my motivation for starting to do this was 
you know, you want to amplify your prayer and maybe accomplish a little bit more with the time you spend in prayer. And what better way to do that than, you know, help people, uh, give people something that might encourage them to pray more themselves. And also I think about it like uh, a pair of shoes that I got when I was maybe in kindergarten. And I was so excited to get these new shoes that I took them to bed and I slept with my shoes. And I remember getting something new, uh, really resting. There's something unique about getting something new that you really like. And if you get a rosary that you really like, you're more likely to want to use it. And if you want to use it, that means you're praying more. And so I think it's a good way to encourage each other to pray a little bit more. I don't think anybody uh, ever was worse off because they prayed too much. So uh, I hope you enjoy making rosaries yourself. Uh, feel free to uh, send me any questions you might have. Uh, I can help you out um, with, you know, by response. Um, hope you enjoy making them. I sure do. And you have a good day. Thank you.